promoters, bullet casters, welcome back to my bench. I am here today to follow up with you on everything we discussed regarding <laughs> these balls. Yes, that's right. Get your mind out of the gutter, folks. We're talking about lead slugs for measuring cylinder throats. Okay, get that, get that one right. Now, what was really important to us was to understand our cylinder throat diameter. And I've got this little series on it. We're going into the measurement, we're going into the purpose, we're going into the how-tos and the why-nots and the what-have-yous. Okay, so we took a lot of great measurements. However, I only captured one on video. And I promise you that the next video was going to be a follow-up to that video with the rest of the slugs. Now, boy, do I have a presentation for you today. I've got all these numbers. I've got a couple of measurement options that I decided to show you. And I got more drawings. And I want us to focus on these drawings first. Because this is going to help us make sense of exactly what it is we're trying to do and understand here. So you've already seen this one here. Cartridge. This is the bullet. This is the throat. Throat diameter smaller than the rest of the chamber. Throat guides the bullet straight into the barrel. At least that's the purpose of it if our bullet fits the throat properly and that's what we've been discussing. So there are some ramifications of what can happen if our bullet does not fit the throat. But first I want to show you this one. This is basically just showing the bullet leaving the case. It might not have even totally disengaged from the case yet, but it's certainly probably about 90% out. And we notice right here the bullet, the sides are touching the throat just fine, making a nice seal, a nice fit. This is what we want to see, folks. But over here, what do we have? We have an undersized bullet. This undersized bullet, yeah, it's making its way out of the case, and it might even go into the barrel, you know, kind of straight or straight enough, but. There's a good chance it's not. And even worse, folks, let's look at all this red right here. I did the best I could to show what it will look like when the hot gases shoot ahead of the bullet. Now, what did I say in the last video, folks? Our job is pretty simple. And I'll put it real plainly. You know, uh, a plumber has a job, and his job ultimately is to keep the water inside of the pipes. An electrician also has a job, and the only way he can do his job efficiently <laughs> is if he keeps the smoke inside of the wires. Yes, let's keep the smoke inside of the wires if you're an electrician. Keep the water inside the pipe if you're a plumber. For crying out loud, keep the lead inside the bullet if you're shooting cast bullets, folks. Keep the gas behind the bullet. All this red represents gas cutting. This is powder charge that's shooting ahead of the bullet and I'll tell you what, it's not hot enough to melt the bullet. I hear a lot of people say, hey you're melting your bullets if you're gas cut. No, you're not really melting them, but what you are doing is you're cutting them. You are shooting hot gases, super hot gases, past that soft Lead. I don't care how hard you cast your bullets, folks. Gas cutting can strip lead. Now, I had mentioned that everything that starts right here affects the outcome of the rest of the bullet travel. We got to be straight. Now, if I got all this gas cutting happening right here, how do I know that I'm not building up a big mound of lead right there at the muzzle end of the throat? What if it's building up inside the throat? It can happen. What if it's building up inside of the forcing cone? What's happening? How can I expect my bullet to enter straight? How can I expect my ignition pressures 
to be consistent for accuracy. And if it's getting bad enough, how do I know that I'm not reaching an unsafe situation? Guys, there's a lot of great diagnostic aids that'll break down, you know, if you're letting what's causing it. But I want you to just go ahead and understand that from the gas cutting perspective, which will strip lead, I want you to go ahead and understand wherever gas cutting occurs, go ahead and figure letting as possible. Now, I want to go over the numbers that I came up with, but here's the thing. I also kind of felt like after that video that perhaps I could have done a little bit better of a job explaining some measurement procedures. I used this dial caliper, which is a great tool. We have them if we're hand loaders. They get us through a lot of uh, measurements. They, they measure pretty close to a thousandths of an inch. And most of us pretty much treat it like, like it's a solid, you know, accurate to the thousandths of an inch because they've been so helpful to us. They're not that accurate. But as I said in the last video, for what we're doing, I believe they're accurate enough. But I felt it only fair to bring up the micrometer that I had suggested is even more accurate. So as you see here, I took a couple of different notes, one from the dial caliper, one from the micrometer, and I'm gonna break down exactly what I came up with and what the difference are. Okay, folks, so I've got my ball number two in my dial caliper, and I want to show you my measurement that I came up with. I want you to notate that this needle, this number here, you know, represents our our first digit, our point four. Our four. This is four tenths of an inch. This is thirty thousandths of an inch. Excuse me. Yes, point four three is where we are. At this number we come down each one of these represents a thousandth of an inch so I'm just past the second little thousandths of an inch mark after the 30 and I know that I've got a 0 0.432 however that needle sits between two marks it sits a little bit high past 0 0.432 do I want to read into that as 0.4325 or should I just consider it 0.432 now this is where we can get a little bit sideways when we use this tool folks it's just not accurate enough to decipher what we uh, have right here it, it's not happening if you need a finer measurement then like I said we need to go to our micrometer something of good quality and uh, we can expect it to be a decent quality micrometer accurate to the thousandths of an inch. And with the veneer scale, we might even dare say accurate to a tenth of a thousandth of an inch. So this is what I want to go over with you here. And I'm going to show you, looks like the little ball fell out. But I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly what I got with the micrometer as well okay so here we are with my micrometer that's guaranteed accurate to the thousandths of an inch even just a little bit past these read a little bit differently so what i want you to note here is that we are again past the four that's our point four however we pass this next line which is uh 25 thousandths of an inch so we are now at 0.425, and we are also just past, make sure you can see it, this number 7 right here, which is actually going to be added to our 0.425. So this brings us to a measurement of 0 0.432, 4 .2, 0.425 plus 7,000 of an inch gives us 0 
and we know that we're at 0 0.432 however we can infer the next digit pretty accurately by using this veneer scale and I'll bring you in on this scale so that you can see exactly what it is that I'm talking about now we're not going to worry so much about these numbers at all but we are going to pay attention to these lines and this set of numbers right here we need to look for the lines that totally match up together and the zero line does not that one line does not however this two line is pretty dang promising folks and i believe we can go ahead and add this to our measurement and we'll call it point four three two two all right <laughs> now what does this mean to me what does that fourth digit mean to me well it, it may or may not mean something to you but really for this purpose here it's not a huge deal because you know what we don't find bullets that are guaranteed to be sized to that fourth digit we don't find molds or sizing dies that are guaranteed to be accurate to that fourth digit so it's really kind of striving for greater accuracy is what it comes down to in our measurement so what does this mean to me as a bullet caster or as someone who is purchasing cast bullets or someone who is trying to diagnose a letting problem that we've been having and we've probably received a lot of advice like hey you need a harder lead or hey you need um, to keep your velocities down so I tell you what where we're gonna start is keeping it simple we're going to start with not this but we want to start with keeping the hot gases behind the bullets folks I'm sorry I gotta bring it up so you can see what I was just talking about so right there on the right once again I go to my whoop, sorry folks I'm just messing y'all up today all right I'm gonna get it together I promise here we are so once again here an undersized bullet if we're not careful we're gonna end up with a whole bunch of leading caused by this gas cutting we're probably not even gonna have a bullet that's very stable going into the barrel it's kind of going in cockeyed and crooked possibly but this one over here that has been sized properly to the chamber throat is keeping all those hot gases behind the bullet which means it's probably doing a good job of also keeping the lead inside the bullet so what bullet am i selecting here for the work that i'm doing well i came up with my dial caliper 432 thousandths of an inch i came up with my micrometer 432 thousandths of an inch so what did i really gain by using this micrometer not a whole lot except for a pretty good uh, detailed study of what my throats look like and my throats are in great uniformity I'm very pleased with that does this mean a whole lot to me at this point not really as far as getting the right size bullet but it gives me confidence that my revolver is probably made a lot better than I would expect out of a production gun okay so bullet size folks I use a 432 thousandths bullet mold but I can't find a sizing die that is for 432 thousandths without going to a custom die maker so I tried a 431 sizing die and it works superbly but I've got to come to full disclosure here the bullets don't remain at 0.431 in fact there is a slight bit of spring back that I've noticed occurring um how long it takes I'm not sure but it does happen it seems like by the time I load it they're a little bit more on the larger side so folks this is also a topic that I'm going to explore but I feel like we did a pretty good job covering our throat size and how to measure our cylinder throats so friends like subscribe and I'll see you soon